V-carve inlays are something that I've wanted to do ever since I got my CNC machine. So today, I'm not just gonna show you how to set this one up, but I'm gonna teach you why they work so you can go ahead and do your own designs. All right, we're just jumping right into this one. And what I'm doing for this demo is just using this 50 star union. And the only thing we need to do to be able to create an inlay is draw a rectangle around this. So now all we need to do is go to our toolpath tab and let's start by making the piece that's gonna be the pocket. So I'm just gonna select all of the stars for that. And we're gonna do an advanced V-carve. Now this piece is pretty small, so we could probably just get away with doing a regular V-carve on this part. But just to keep everything standard, I'm gonna use the advanced V-carve feature. And we're gonna enable this area pocket. And because this is so small, I'm actually going to change this tool to just another V-bit. And now here's the important part. We have our start depth and our max depth. So for the pocket, we want a start depth of zero and a max depth of 0.2. And now if we zoom in here, you can see that with the advanced VCAR feature, it's gonna clear out more of this area in the bottom, but it's gonna leave this flat. And it's doing that with that 60 degree V bit. So let's take a look at the simulation real quick. And they really just look like a regular V-carved star. There's just a slight flat bottom to them. All right, now we need to do our inlay part. And for that, we're gonna select everything. So we want the stars and the rectangle that we drew around them selected. Again, we're gonna click Advanced V-carve. We'll enable a pocket tool. This time we're gonna keep it that 1 8 inch bit. I just wanna adjust these feed rates a little bit. So now my normal feed rate for an eighth inch bit like this is going to be about 100 on the feed and probably 80 on the plunge, but I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. So we're gonna go 70 on the feed and 50 on the plunge. And I'm leaving the depth per pass at 0 0.05. And I'll explain to you why I'm turning these numbers down a little bit. So for the inlay, we want our start depth to be at 0.1. So it's actually going to start cutting below the top surface of our material. And when we combine this with our depth per pass, that's gonna give us a 0 0.150 inch depth of cut. Our max depth, we're still gonna leave at 0.2. And then we'll just name it and click okay. Now let me disable the pocket and I'll show you what this simulation looks like. So you can see here it's clearing all around our stars and it's just leaving a little bit of the top of that star flat. So that's all we need to do to set this up. We're gonna save these as two separate tool paths and we're gonna run the pocket on one piece of material and then the inlay on another. But before we do this, I wanna switch gears real quick and show you on some larger stars exactly what's going on here because I want you guys to understand why we're making those offset changes. All right, so what I've done here is I've just drawn these four stars and this first one is going to be our pocket and then these next three are going to be our inlays. So what I've got on this one is a start depth of zero and a max depth of one. On star number two, we have a start depth of 0.1 and a max depth of 0.2. And on star number three, we have a start depth of 0 0.05 and a max depth of 0.15. So let's go ahead and cut these out real quick. All right, and I'm starting with the eighth inch end mill. And you're gonna see me here switching to the 60 degree V bit. And it's important to keep in mind that if you're using Carbide Create to do this, you're going to need either the bit setter or like these depth stop collars like I'm using here. And I'll put a link in the description to show you how I set these up. And another thing that's a little bit of a pain is that it does each one individually. So you can't just run like your eighth inch end mill and machine 
everything with that and then switch to the 60 degree V-bit and machine everything with that, you have to keep switching like you're seeing me do here. So after I cut those test pieces out on the router, I went ahead and I used my miter saw to cut them in half. So you'll be able to see this a little better. And I also took the uh, negative side or the pocket side and I've made this gray so it'll be a little easier to see. So keep in mind that our pocket side has a flat bottom depth of 0.2 inches. And we're gonna go ahead and start with piece number one, which is a start depth of zero and a max depth of 0.1. And you can see that if I go to put that together, it actually doesn't really fit. It doesn't lock together because the top surface where these outermost points are is the same size as the top surface on this piece that we're trying to fit into it. Now our second one has a start depth of 0.1 and a max depth of 0.2. And you can see that this one fits inside and this one leaves us with a space that's 0.1 inches. And now our final one has a start depth of 0.05 and a max depth of 0.150. And you can see how when we put this together, we get a gap of 0.150. So I hope that gives you a good visual representation of what's gonna happen when you adjust your start and your max depth. And I know that can get a little confusing. Don't get too hung up on those numbers. The most important thing to keep in mind is that you don't want to do it with a zero start depth. You're going to need something there because you, you need that gap for your glue to go into. But you don't want it to be too big like the 0.150 gap that we had. That was probably too big and that's actually going to be weak on the uh, inlay that we're putting in there. So if you were doing this on a cutting board or something, that could definitely be a spot that could fail. I try to keep them tight, like the 0.1, and you can play with these numbers and get them even tighter if you'd like to. The pocket side of these is pretty straightforward, the stars that we cut just a second ago. Where it gets a little confusing is what we're working on right here, and that's the inlay side. And you can see what it's doing first is it's using that eighth inch bit it's just clearing out a bunch of that material and then we'll switch over to that 60 degree v-bit and it's gonna cut everything into the shape that'll fit into our v-carve and it just leaves a little bit of material around the edge and I go ahead and cut that off with my miter saw and that's just because of the way that I had this job set up you could you know completely eliminate that in the machining process if you wanted Then I just take a medium bristled brush and I go ahead and brush those pieces out. And here you can see both pieces. You can see on the inlay piece, the maple that I've cleaned that edge off, like I said. And it's very important that both of these pieces are very clean. You know, you don't want any little fibers or anything uh, trying to squeeze in between them because they could cause this to be uneven and you really want to get a lot of glue in there. Uh, make sure every little part of your pocket is filled with glue. If there's too much, it'll just squeeze out. This is a little overkill here. I go ahead and wipe some of this off. But really, you can't have too much glue when you're doing these. Clamping is also very important. At the end, I'll show you where I had a little problem which was caused by my clamping um, in the video here I'm just putting a couple clamps on I did put a couple more on but probably what would have been better would be to have sandwiched these two pieces between a couple other pieces of wood and once that's dry I just go ahead and use that same surfacing bit and I'm just barely cutting into the top of that cherry just to clean this up nicely and again I'm doing that manually
So overall, I'm pretty happy with this. I would definitely call it a success, but you can see here in the middle where I did have a little issue with the stars not being pressed in hard enough in the center. That's probably just because I didn't have enough clamps there. So that's something important to keep in mind when you're doing yours. Thanks for all the support you guys have been giving me. I really appreciate a like, share, and a comment on the video. And that lets YouTube know to start showing my stuff to more people. And a big thank you to these guys right here for supporting me on Patreon. I really appreciate it, guys.